been a while since I have been doing a video. Um, it's actually been really nice to not be producing a lot and also not be engaging with so much information and also inspiration that comes through social media um, because it allows me to clarify my thoughts and what I am going through and and um, what's my process instead of being so attuned to everyone else's what they're going through and what the collective is going through and um, today I was on a walk and um, this thought came to my mind and it's kind of like an oversimplification of being a human of how how to live in harmony with yourself this is what I like to call it and um, this is a theme that I've been contemplating in my own life that has been very relevant to me and that I've also talked about with my friends and um, basically the idea is that in order to live in harmony with ourselves we need to be in touch with our inner being and then we need to take care of that inner being with our outer being what I call an outer being um, you could also call these um, the inner child and the parent um, so essentially in life what our task is is to recognize our inner needs our feelings our dreams and then we need to act on them. We need to provide ourselves what it is that we're feeling, we're needing, or we are dreaming about. And um, of course, this sounds very simple, and it is not very simple. Um, or it is, it is simple, but it's not very easy. That's how I would say it. And what makes things more complicated is that we, if we just come, you know, to our lives and we are maybe in our 20s or our 30s or 40s whenever we kind of become aware of this whenever you're hearing this message now um, it's not just a simple thing to begin to listen to your inner being and then begin to provide it for providing for that inner being but what needs to be happen first before we can start doing that is we need to I think you know what I'm going to be saying we need to heal our trauma we need to become aware of our hurt the way in which our needs were not met when we were children the way in which we got hurt um, in our childhood because that is the operational system that is going on there before we heal that so um, if there is an example for example um, my trauma would be that I wasn't seen by a parent in my childhood. So then my inner being, my inner child will carry that hurt of not being seen. And that can of course manifest in life in different ways. Some of us, we have a reactive tendency. So I might go looking for, um, you know, recognition or being seen from someone else. Or I might have a repressive nature where I might just shut down completely and say, um, you know hide myself from the world because now I some part of me believes that um, I'm not worthy of being seen so if I if I don't heal if I don't recognize that trauma and if I don't heal it then my inner being will kind of act either in the reactive or in the repressive manner but when I do become aware of my trauma I'm like oh my goodness this was what happened in my childhood. My parent was not able to see me and it's not their fault, it's not my fault, it's not anyone's fault because they came along with their trauma. They didn't get a chance to do the same healing work. So I become aware of that. I say, wow, inner child, oh my God, no wonder you're hurt because you should have been seen, you should have been taken care for and you you um, deserved all of that love and all, all of what you desire and what you need. And now that we're an adult, um, instead of acting out like that child, I, I choose to, the, the parent that I am now for myself, I can nourish and nurture that inner child back into feeling trust and feeling happy and feeling, feeling seen. And so that is the responsibility that we each have. We need to recognize what happened how we are still carrying that hurt with us and how that is manifesting in our lives. And when we figured that out, I might still get episodes, kind of like a um, moment where I am, for example, in a 
current relationship and I feel like I'm not seen and that might be my my thing that just flares up every once in a while because it was a big trauma from the past so then I recognize my inner being says hey I don't feel seen in this relationship or right now in this moment and then me as a parent wise parent now I say oh darling okay of course and then I get to somehow fulfill the need of being seen and sometimes that might mean me expressing that to my partner that might mean getting support in some way sometimes it's already enough that we just recognize ourselves and see ourselves in that moment so it varies of course how we fulfill that need but basically this is the time when we've done the healing of our past of our traumas um, it doesn't have to be again perfectionist like 100% but when we've become aware when we have enough self-awareness around these things we can begin to <clears throat> live quite simply like what I described in the beginning the harmonious way of living I get an emotion <clears throat> this is a silly example but I'm gonna use it so I was in Costa Rica and I was taking the bus back to the airport from the town that I was in and it's like a six-hour bus ride and um, I love to sit in the buses, that's why I always take them. And I bought the ticket and my ticket said seat 40. So I go to the bus and it's pretty full already at that time. And there is a girl sitting at the row um, on my seat at the window window uh, seat. And the, the aisle seat next to her is, is free. But when I look at the numbers, the indicators at the top, I see that the, the 40 my seat is the window seat and she's sitting on it. And right away, my inner being is like, I want, the, I want the window seat. And I say, okay, inner child, I know you want the window seat, okay. And I have a people pleasing tendency. I have the tendency of not wanting to cause inconvenience. So then there was a part of me that said, it's okay we can sit on the aisle whatever and while i was having this like it's so complicated it sometimes gets so complicated inside ourselves while i was having this this um this uh dialogue going on within me um i saw that there is another row of seats and i could sit on the window seat so i decided okay let me see if if i can sit here and then um, a person comes to the bus and that's their seat. So they ask me to move. So I move to the next row where there is also a window seat open and another person comes and they say that this is my seat. So the bus is starting to fill up. And now I am in this moment where I need to either create a conflict within myself, um, not request for the window seat for the girl to move and just sit on the aisle seat and feel bitter and feel uncomfortable and conflicted inside or I get to do the uncomfortable for what is for me uncomfortable and for some of you it might not be uncomfortable. But what I need to do now is tell the girl, hey, you know what, that is my seat um, and um, can we change seats? And that's what I did because I've learned that I am no longer willing to create that kind of conflict within myself. Um, those conflicts, when they accumulate, they become physical symptoms, they become emotional symptoms, they become mental symptoms like depression or anxiety. And there is, because I believe that there is this inner child within all of us and our priority, our most important task in this lifetime is to learn to take care of that. And why we have to learn to take care of it and why we don't already do that is because when as we're literal, when we're literal children, our parents are by design unable to meet some of our needs. For some of us, it means many of our needs and we have a very um, turbulent childhood with a lot of kind of um, things that were, were uh, missing in our childhood. For some of us, maybe the fortunate ones of us, uh, we might have little things where, we're, where our needs were not met. But regardless of what the extent of of that situation is we the, the child when we are children we begin to believe that we are now worthy of having our needs met because our primary person caregiver is unable to give that to us and there is a beautiful saying when a parent is unable to meet the child's needs or unable to love their child the child does not stop loving the parents. The child stops loving themselves. 
So that's what happens. We are so wired to be so connected to our caregiver that no matter what kind of bullshit they go on with, uh, we don't many times stop loving them as children. Maybe as a teenager, we start realizing like this is messed up. But what happens is we turn it towards ourselves. This is a very unconscious thing that happens in childhood. And um, we simply say, maybe I'm not worthy of that. Maybe I don't deserve it. Maybe I'm unlovable. And that's why my parent is not giving me what I should be given, what other people's re people receive, for example. So this is the thing. We need to become aware of our inner child, where our inner child formed a thought pattern like that. Was it around, um, you know, love? Was it around getting your physical needs met? Was it around um, being, um, you know, being uh, complimented, being, um, what is the word that I'm looking for? Being acknowledged for, for who you are. And these programs, they run in our lives. And what healing means is becoming aware of those and healing those because they are not the truth. They are not the truth. They were just your parents' trauma, not the truth. So this is the healing work we get to do because we all have to do it. We all have it. There is no person on this planet currently who did not um, go through a childhood where some of their needs were um, not met. And this creates a traumatized society where we are still acting out from the from the child's perspective we are not the wise parent uh saying that okay child oh this is now your your need um and you know my my boss um example um there are two ways i could have handled or you know there are two kind of trauma ways one could handle those the first one would be the what i would do the people pleasing where i shut it down i have the desire i want to sit on the window seat but i say no no you this girl is now there don't cause an inconvenience don't ask her to move just sit on the aisle and be happy that's that would be my way the other trauma response might be hey what the fuck are you doing that's my seat and that's also another one that's that's not helpful either so that's when the child in us is still out of balance they're still acting from the place of hurt and when we heal that child then we can say we can we can speak with the voice of the wise parent and say hey excuse me this like looking at my ticket this is my seat can we switch and there doesn't have to be any um any grudge to be held there doesn't have to be any argument there doesn't have to be any conflict there is this is how we move through life with in a clean way this is how we become energetically clean emotionally clean we recognize an inner sensation inner feeling inner need and we act on it we we recognize it first and we don't immediately react on it we don't immediately shut it down but we say ha huh, okay this is the need i have right now how can I make it happen? Because I'm worthy of that. I know it now. My parent wasn't able to give it to me maybe when I was a child. Therefore, I created this thought pattern that I am not worthy of getting my needs met. But I know that to be a false statement. It's not the truth. So now with this wisdom that I gained as a healed adult, um, I get to provide for myself. I get to say, okay, now I need to take a nap. I need to end this phone call. I need to put my phone down. I need to uh, be alone for a while. I need to eat something, you know? I, I need to feel this emotion or in relationships, um, you know, taking responsibility, saying um, the conversation we had last night, after that, I that made me feel this and this and this way. Obviously we're not blaming the other person you know you made me feel this way we say interesting thing this is what i notice my inner being is experiencing right now um it means what, what is one of the hardest things for me is to express my needs in relationships so say you know what i need to cancel or i need to reschedule or i need to tell you that the way you worded something was was um insensitive you know or there was hurt in me or some whatever it may be or i'm feeling angry like whatever expression 
but that is we need to get it out and maybe in the beginning it feels too courageous to say to the person so maybe we write it down or maybe we but, but the inner being the inner child needs to be recognized because otherwise we create the conflict and the conflict especially over time it's not good it's not when when there is like a lot of conflict like a big pile of conflict that we've created within ourselves that begins to manifest in such um ways and it usually travels from the emotional body to the physical body so at some point we have some sort of physical sh symptom showing up and hopefully it's nothing nothing urgent or nothing horrendous but many times it you know it there are cases many um many studies about trauma for example the work of Gabor Mate he discovered that so many female cancer patients had a lot of repressed anger in them so there was anger that they did not um, honor. They didn't say to the inner being, oh, you're feeling angry, let's express it. Of course, in a healthy way, not in a violent way, in a healthy way. But that is also in a way violence when we turn it inward and when we, when we don't honor our inner feeling. And then there is a war inside of the body. Maybe cells begin to, you know, regenerate too fast or whatever happens. So, um, so not to not to bring any fear into any of this but just to say that it's important like we can't get away um without it you know we can't get away with suppressing our emotions or being reactive with our emotions we need to learn to recognize our own needs our emotions our feelings and then we need to become the wise parent who um who fulfills those needs and who is there supporting and holding space for whatever goes on because in a way, I, I don't even take my inner being so damn personally anymore. Like, oh, it's embarrassing to express this, or oh my God, what are they gonna think? I say, this is the need I'm getting, I'm gonna put it out there. You know, this is the emotion that is coming up, I'm gonna express it. There is nothing embarrassing about these things. They just are. This is what it is to be a human. We are emoting, feeling, beings and we have our needs i mean we we need to do things we we need to receive things so those are our needs and it's it's just self-compassion to um do the healing work first and then to begin to honor these needs i would love to hear your thoughts thank you so much for listening um yeah how, where where are you with this process and you don't have to tell me necessarily but just throwing out the questions where where are you in this process are you honoring the needs are you are you in touch with your inner being do you hear the requests and the needs i love you very much i'll see you next time